pretty soon some sharks will have a Napoleon complex. Damn it, climate change! Climate change may actually be altering the size of the planet's fish. A recent study published in the journal Global Change Biology suggests that rising temperatures in oceans might be shrinking fish. Warmer waters mean less oxygen, something fish need to grow into adulthood. Fish use their gills to breathe underwater. From an evolutionary perspective, less oxygen would see gills adapting to warmer waters by becoming smaller. Researchers found that warming oceans may cause fish such as tuna and trout to shrink by around 30 and 8% respectively. They estimate that worldwide this trend could reduce the amount of fish that can be caught for food by 30%. But hey, at least on the positive side, you might soon be able to put a pet shark in a fish bowl. Is climate change the biggest threat to the human race? Well, we don't know, but it's getting scarier all the time. The state of the climate is dismal. A report from the U.S.'s National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration confirmed that 2016 was a year of extreme heat, surpassing 2015 as the warmest year since records began 137 years ago. A strong El Nino coupled with long-term global warming led to land and sea surface temperatures reaching unprecedented heights in 2016, making it the hottest year on record. The planet's greenhouse gas emissions likewise went up, with carbon dioxide concentrations increasing to more than 400 parts per million for the first time ever. Global sea levels are at their highest, at 3.25 inches more than the 1993 average. The past two decades have seen sea levels go up at an average of 0.13 inches annually, with the Western Pacific and Indian Oceans showing the highest rates of increase. Water and precipitation cycles exhibited extremes, with droughts plaguing parts of Africa and South America. Other areas, meanwhile, were beset by floods and tropical cyclones, which in 2016 numbered 93. The report's findings emphasize that the symptoms of climate change show no sign of slowing and will likely intensify unless major changes are made. But with recent blows to efforts combating climate change, including the Trump administration pulling out of the Paris Agreement, it seems we'll see more record-breaking weather in the years to come. Eating beans over meat could save the planet. A new study shows Americans should probably eat more beans than meat if the country wants to meet its emissions target. Cows emit methane due to a digestive process known as enteric fermentation. Most of the methane is released through belching, and only a small percentage is produced through flatulence. The massive amount of greenhouse gas produced by cows is comparable to the pollution produced by cars. Growing pulses is greatly beneficial to the environment, as they are able to directly draw nitrogen from the atmosphere and convert it into nutrients. This means a reduction in the amount of fossil fuels used to produce nitrogen to create these nutrients. It is also much more water efficient to grow pulses than to raise cattle. Beans also provide similar nutrients to the human body as beef, without the increased risk of developing type 2 diabetes, stroke, and colorectal cancer. Research shows changing the population's diet from beef to beans could help the U.S. meet its emissions target by 2020. Another study published in April recommended substituting meat with crickets and mealworms in order to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Would you give up your juicy steaks for beans and worms? Cooling the planet at a cost. As temperatures on Earth reach unprecedented highs, extreme, potentially disastrous weather will become more likely. Scientists say there may be ways to intervene, but warn they come with risky consequences. Researchers are investigating strategies for geoengineering, one of which is mimicking the effects of a volcanic eruption. Erupting volcanoes spew out large amounts of sulfur-rich gases, which help cool the Earth by reflecting solar radiation back into space. The same effect could be recreated using planes that would inject sulfur into the atmosphere. But to cool the planet by one degree Celsius, 6,700 injections are needed eventually, which would cost 20 billion US dollars annually. This approach also risks destroying the ozone layer and reducing rainfall, enough to potentially cause droughts in certain regions. A similarly drastic approach to cooling the Earth can be achieved by thinning, heat-trapping cirrus clouds. Seeding causes the clouds to break apart and lets more heat escape. 
The seeding process, however, must be precise. Otherwise, new cirrus clouds may form elsewhere and add to warming. But while sulfur injections and cirrus cloud seedings will cool the land, carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere remain the same, and ocean acidification continues. As such, researchers argue the two strategies should be deployed more as a last resort, adding that reducing carbon emissions are much more effective at curing climate change. Global warming could unleash viruses and permafrost. Scientists warn that climate change is melting permafrost soils, which may lead to the release of ancient viruses and bacterium. Permafrost is permanently frozen soil. It is a good preserver for microbes and viruses because of low temperatures and the lack of oxygen. As temperatures in the Arctic Circle rise, the permafrost melts, which may lead to the release of trapped viruses. Layers of permafrost could also be exposed by mining and drilling operations. Meanwhile, bacteria that can form spores are able to survive longer compared to bacteria that do not form spores. In August 2016, more than 20 people were reportedly infected by the anthrax virus that was released by thawed permafrost in the Yamal Peninsula in the Arctic Circle. 